to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Good morning. Today's photo of the sun setting over Lake Ontario, viewed through icicle bars, comes to us from Rocco Sea of Celestial Blue Photography, who used his cricket cam on the lake for the first time on Wednesday to capture the scene by getting down low and taking the shot from underneath a tree branch to prove that the sun still exists and that sometimes we can find beauty and wonder in this world when we change our perspective. Well, it's Friday, thank God, and I'm experiencing that shift in perspective that rejoices because the weekend is one work tour away, and if the Lord wills it, I'll be heading up to my countryside home to be reunited with my wife tonight. I do have to give everyone a heads up, though, that even though we will make it to the weekend when work ends, the machinations of men will cause us to lose one hour of our time off as we will spring forward by setting the clocks ahead in the early morning hours on Saturday night or Sunday morning, depending on your perspective. In my pre-Christ addicted past, I would have seen this as a loss, as my Saturday night binge drinking revelry would have been curtailed a bit. Uh, but now I have, um, I have left. Now that I've left that bondage behind and am no longer a night owl, I see it as a gain, as I will get to my morning prayers and Bible study that much sooner. Our perspective can make all the difference when it comes to experiencing joy and peace. Seeing things as the Lord sees them and knowing that he is in control provides an abiding sense of peace, meaning, and purpose to life. Whereas viewing the world through the eyes of men who don't know God causes us to have no hope because from that perspective, the good old days are dwindling and the bad old days of suffering and death are quickly approaching, causing you to be fearful or bitter. But let me remind us all that view is no longer ours as we know that we have eternal security in Christ, and every passing day brings us closer to discovering the glory of being in his presence, uh, uh, in, the, in his presence forevermore. As I edit, my bad. Uh, anyway, there is nothing to be afraid of when you are in Christ. Jesus showed everyone that he conquered death in the grave, and because we put our faith in him, we will one day share in that victory as we enter into his kingdom in eternity. But we get uh, even uh, we get more good news because Christ also came to give us uh, life uh, more abundantly while we are here on the earth. And when we decide to follow him by walking in the spirit, our lives become a never-ending adventure that is marked by peace, love, and joy. So let's go get it. Uh, let's follow the Lord to where he leads and see what's next as we continue with our current series as we are walking through the season of Lent, now on day 15 of the 40-day uh, journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, as, a, as a reminder, and as we will say each day of this journey, we take this path to mark the season of Lent and to draw closer to God in anticipation for the celebration of Easter knowing that if we take this journey of repentance seriously, we will not only see the days and seasons change, the Lord will use it to change us too. Uh, you can sign up to get this devotional yourself by going to buy the Bible Gateway link on the blog. Uh, but for today, we start day 15. As uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes, this does not refer to God's righteousness, but to suffering for the sake of a righteous cause. Suffering uh, because of the righteous judgment and action of Jesus' disciples. And judgment and action, those who follow Jesus will be different from the world in renouncing their property, happiness, rights, righteousness, honor, and violence. They will be offensive to the world. That is why the disciples will be persecuted for righteousness' sake. Not recognition, but rejection will be their reward from the world for their word and deed. It is important that Jesus calls his disciples blessed, not only when they directly confess his name, but also when they suffer for a just cause. End quote. 
Uh, well, it might not be surprising, but today's uh, passage uh, is correlates with uh, Matthew 5.5, 5, the biblical wisdom that's presented today. Uh, and the words of Jesus say, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, the question is a ponder um, that they present. Uh, the first question is, what do you think of Bonhoeffer's assertion that disciples will be offensive to the world? Well, as I stated above about perspective, how annoying are those who know that they are saved and have the answers to life and death to a world that doesn't believe in God or that doesn't know that you can know God and the truth that he has given us? Our joy is an offense, um, but so is our conviction that God's word is true and that we will be held accountable for the way we live our lives according to what it says. The word tells us about sin and about Jesus, and the world is offended by the implications of both because they refuse to surrender to Christ's lordship. Our presence as Christians uh, is an offense uh, an offensive reminder of the facts that they have rejected in fear are true. There we go. And the next question uh, in the study is, why is today, uh, why is it today that the world often seems more indifferent to Christians and, and the church than offended by them? Well, true indifference would indicate spiritual blindness. Anyone indifferent to the gospel has decided it isn't true, thus making Christianity a myth or a fairy tale, and no self-respecting, quote-unquote, logical adult would concern themselves with fantasy. Instead, the indifferent would see life as a mystery, with the vague hope of a continuation of life, twisting God's truth, or they would admit to the meaningless of their logical, godless universe, with the eventual erasure of their personal life, and ultimately all, all life as the universe logically will fade to black. The indifferent aren't offended because they have decided that Christians are deluded and wrong, but one day they will weep as they learn that Jesus Christ is Lord and they have no place in his kingdom. Uh, the final question of the questions to ponder is, in what way is a disciple blessed when he or she suffers for a just cause? Disciples are blessed when we suffer for a just cause, particularly the cause of sharing the gospel or doing the good works that God has prepared for us to do, because it is the fruit of our faith. Our suffering for a good cause demonstrates the authenticity of our faith and gives glory to God. I know I, I personally didn't have a lot of motivation to do, to do good prior to Christ, and I can point to the suffering I have experienced and the good works that I may have par played a part in as the evidence of the transformed life I have experienced because of Christ in me. The suffering reminds us of our blessed conditions, and we, like, we, like the apostles before us, should consider our trials joy when we suffer for the cause of Christ. The next uh, part of the study is a psalm fragment, and today's psalm fragment is Psalm 112, 6 through 9, and the psalmist says, For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have, dis distribu they have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. They, their righteousness endures forever. Forgive the, the, the distributed freely. They've given freely. Um, yeah, and uh, that's it. We will we'll be remembered forever from the world. Well, in God's kingdom, that's what's going to last forever. And we're not afraid of e evil tidings, because uh, we're our for, our hearts are firm and secure in the Lord, as the psalmist says. You know, so um, our hearts are steady when we know who we are in Christ, and uh, we, we will not be afraid when we know we are in Christ's kingdom um, that we have been saved. In the end, we'll look up in triumph on our foes, and uh, we we just react 
from the blessing that we've received in Christ. That's my commentary on the psalm, I guess. Um, so, uh, And then we move on to the next section is journal reflections, uh, which prompt us to write about a time when you suffered for doing the right thing. Reflect on your feelings about that experience. I can point to the lost relationships and mild persecution I've experienced because of my decision to follow Christ as my suffering for doing the right thing. Uh, the change in me personally and my zeal for sharing the gospel is an offense to this world, and even though I am happy with what the Lord has done in my life, I would be lying if I told anyone that I didn't come, it didn't come with a cost, a painful cost, but one I would gladly pay again and again, as I know that doing the right thing, of putting my faith in Christ, has blessed me beyond measure, uh, continues to bless me, and gives me the assurance of life everlasting in his kingdom. So, yeah, that's my reflection. Um, you know, his love makes it worth it all. You know. um, the final uh, journal prompting is uh, directs us to uh, consider, have you ever held back from doing the right thing because you were afraid of rejection or suffering? If so, reflect on how it felt to hold back. I can't imagine there'd be anybody who never held back from doing the right thing. I suppose there could be, but uh, I'm not perfect. So that's why I, I find it hard to believe that anyone would hold back from doing the right thing because they were afraid of rejection or suffering. We're only human after all, um, although we're now in Christ. Um, let's see what I had to say. Uh, I am sure I have held back from doing the right thing because of fear or uh, the fear of, reject, a fear of rejection and suffering. I am somewhat of a people pleaser and being an offense is not fun. I don't want to rain on someone's parade by pointing out their errors and how they are in mortal danger of eternity in hell. Also, I suffer from mild social anxiety at times, that's putting it mildly, and I don't want to stand out and and may, may have shied away from doing the right thing because I would have to speak up and risk being rejected. However, I am a work in progress, and I am a little less prone from not doing the right thing simply because I walk in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's guidance compels me to, to do the right thing. Um, I have deep regrets and little peace if I wantonly, wantonly re neglect doing the right thing and often find myself going back and doing the right thing after having decided not to, which causes a fair amount of shame, but ultimately gives me a great peace because I went back and corrected myself when and where I could. So yeah, you... You never regret doing the right thing, you, you know. You usually, even if you suffer um, for Christ's cause, uh, Christ's cause, um, you only you, you really regret it when you don't do the right thing. So, you know, don't be like me and shy back from doing the right thing because you're afraid of rejection and suffering. Do the right thing, and uh, you know, follow the Lord and see what that is. Um, His Word gives you a big hint on uh, on that. By the way. Um, Anyway, uh, for the intercessions uh, section of today's study, they, they ask you to think of people you know or know of who are suffering for righteousness' sake. Pray that they might receive courage and comfort from their, from their faith and that they might prevail. Okay, and when they ask, if someone asks you to pray, what do you do? You pray right away, right then and there. Um, that way you don't forget and you're faithful to the prayer request. Um, anyway, we're going to pray that uh, prayer. Uh, Lord God, I pray for my fellow Christians who suffer for righteousness' sake. I pray that they will receive courage and comfort from the assurances that come from their faith in Jesus Christ and that they prevail over the situations they are facing. I also pray for those who suffer because of their beliefs in justice and mercy, but who don't know Jesus Christ. I pray for them to not only be delivered from the suffering they are experiencing on earth, but I pray that their eyes and hearts be open to the author of justice and mercy and to put their faith in Jesus Christ, to know what real righteousness is and to be saved from the righteous judgment that would send them to eternal suffering. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And finally, the prayer for today, Lord, Lord, give me the wisdom to know what is right and make me willing to suffer for a just cause. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that was day 15 of the 40-day journey with Diedrich Bonhoeffer. We're, we're not quite to the halfway point yet, 
But we are one day closer to spring, as today is March 10th. And spring, according to my calendar, starts on the 20th. And prayerfully, the weather will agree with that and come sooner than the 20th. But uh, I haven't watched the weather, so I have no idea um, if, that's, if, we're, if that's in the forecast or not. But we're praying for it in faith um, that spring will come. Uh, daylight savings times might cause us, uh, you know, a loss of an hour. But it'll mean, you know, sun. the sun will set that much later. Um you know, so we'll get more daylight, I guess. Um, so it's Friday. Let's thank God. Um, let's pray for, you know, well, let's just pray, I guess. Um, well, before that, um, let me remind you, we always invite you to go to mtforchrist.org, where we always share insights from prominent Christian theologians and counselors to assist my brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today, we continue sharing from A.W. Pink's the sovereignty of God, and um, maybe because I was going to pray, I, I'm reminded that we're sharing from chapter nine, uh, which is got, uh, which is entitled "God's Sovereignty and Prayer." So, if you wanted to see what A. W. Pink has to say about prayer and how he addresses uh, the first, um, you know, prayer, um, uh, why we have to pray, and uh, things to do with prayer, uh, go to mtforchrist.org. And you'll see that resource at the end of today's blog post. So we, we you know, we we found these books or uh, these studies helpful in our walk, and we share them to encourage others to, you know, uh, to draw close to God, to, to maybe learn, um, to, you know, something you didn't know. Um, you know, you see something, say something. And uh, I read the Sovereignty of God a while back, and. Uh, you know, it gives you great assurance that God's in control. God is sovereign, and uh, we need to know that. And so, um, as we go today, we'd like to, you know, we'd like to thank uh, the Lord for giving us another subscriber on the YouTube channel. Amen. Um, you know, and it doesn't look like he's from the, you know, I don't know, but um, maybe an international viewer. So, we're, we're, we're touched by that. Um and uh, thank you, uh, Lord, also for someone reaching out and asking for the materials to the bond, uh, the bondage breaker study. Um, as a reminder, basically, we provide uh, discipleship classes that we taught back in 2021 at our local church on the podcast and our YouTube channel. Uh, the classes were Victory Over the Darkness, The Bondage Breaker, and Freedom in Christ, which are all based on the Word of God and Dr. Neil Anderson's um, uh, books and um Basically, we 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 provide the uh, study guides and uh, handouts that we gave out in uh, class um, free of charge via email. Um, if you reach out to me and, and ask for them, uh, and you can reach me at mt for christ two four seven at gmail dot com, and uh, I'll send you those word docs, and you can do the study. You know, you listen to the podcast, watch the podcast, um, and. Uh, Reflect on the material and uh, or read the books and reflect on the material and uh, draw closer to God. Know, uh, learn who you are in Christ and uh, discover your freedom uh, in Christ through those. And so we put it out there and people keep clicking on it. So we're we're very happy. Um, we're humble. It's not, you know, we're not exactly making money on YouTube or anything. We're not monetized. Um, uh, but, but we just, if we can encourage one person to, uh, discover their freedom and victory in Christ, um, it's worth it. And that's, that's our ministry here at mtforchrist.org and the MT for Christ 24 seven podcast is to encourage people to walk in the spirit and follow the Lord every day of their lives. Um, and to, to know the Lord more, um, because you can, and he blesses your life when you walk in the spirit. So now I think we should pray. Um, there's other materials, obviously out there. We do also provide a Bible study with Arthur and Susanna Sincati. We encourage people to check those out too. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, and most importantly, we just encourage you to, uh, to walk and talk with God every day. Uh, so let's do that in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Thank God. Thank you, God, that it's Friday. 
Lord, we just pray for you to move us through this work day uh, with uh, your grace and your provision. Um, Lord, guide our path so we can do the best job we can do today and, um, and rejoice um, in your presence while we do it. Um, Lord, we pray for anyone who's listening or, or, or watching or listening to this podcast um, that you would bless them and their walk. Lord, that you would come alongside them in their prayer request and open their eyes to who you are and what you want them to do in their lives. Um, Lord, we, we need your guidance and we need your love and uh, we're, we're blessed when we receive it. And so we're, we're asking and um, we know when we ask that, that you'll bring it. Um, so we're asking for it today. We pray for you to open our eyes to the things you want us to see. We pray for you to move us into the things you'd have us do. And uh, Lord, we just want we just want to represent you uh, on the earth. Um, so, and we want you to know, Lord, that we love you, we thank you, and we praise you, uh, and we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.